Today we're talking about the Brazilian blue tarantula. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy species specific care and husbandry videos or all things tarantula related, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. And don't forget to turn on all notifications so you're alerted every time I upload new content. Now, I've gotten so many requests to cover this species, and I've been putting it off for a while because I was waiting for my specimen to molt and look its best. And for all of you that have been requesting a care and husbandry video on this tarantula, I hope this helps you out. So let's get into it. Pelma sazame, also known as the Brazilian blue tarantula or iridescent blue tarantula, is a gorgeous New World species from the Bahai and Minas Gerais regions of Brazil. This is a very colorful blue tarantula that has been smuggled repeatedly to America and Europe. And due to its shrinking habitat from deforestation, wildfire, and urban sprawl and farming, this tarantula is now endangered in its native location. This makes it even more important to ensure that you're getting your specimen from a reputable dealer that sells captive bred tarantulas. At first glance, they don't look very blue, and when they're in pre-molt, they look almost a grayish black. But right after a molt, you can see the blue hue with bright red setae that is even more apparent once you add a little direct light. This is truly a gorgeous specimen, but they can be very skittish and a little defensive. So not the best choice for a beginner tarantula keeper. The P. Sazame is found in the eastern part of Brazil and is in an environment that is very cool in the winter and very hot in the summer. They experience heavy rainfall as well as long periods of little moisture, so they're very adaptable to their environment. They will usually burrow deep when they're looking to escape the heat or find more humidity. So you need to make sure you provide them with a nice depth of substrate. They are quick to throw a threat posture and kick hairs when they feel threatened and they can be very fast and will usually prefer to dive into their hide before showing any defensive behaviors. This is not a species that I would recommend trying to handle, but they can be a gorgeous specimen to have on display. I set up my spiderlings in my basic spiderling enclosure like any other New World terrestrial species. I fill the enclosure up at least two thirds with substrate as they prefer to burrow deep as spiderlings. I keep the substrate damp, but not swampy, and provide a tiny water dish if there is room or drip water down the sides of the enclosure once or twice a week. Because this specimen prefers more humid environments as spiderlings, I tend not to use cocoa fiber and opt for substrate like creature soil or jungle mix, as these tend to hold moisture better and also hold their shape better so there is less worry of burrows collapsing. I provide a small hide, though they tend to just burrow deep and stay there for weeks or months at a time. They are pretty hardy as spiderlings, and as long as you keep the substrate slightly damp, you will have no issues raising them up into the juvenile stage. Now I keep my jubies in a basic acrylic terrestrial juvenile enclosure. I still use creature soil or jungle mix, though I will sometimes mix it half and half with cocoa fiber to help stretch it out. I prefer to keep this species at this size in an enclosure that offers more cross ventilation as opposed to top ventilation, though that isn't a necessity. I just find the cross ventilation provides plenty of fresh air while maintaining slightly higher humidity. I provide a cork bark hide, a water dish, and keep the substrate slightly damp in one corner by overflowing the water dish from time to time and letting it dry out slightly in between. It is important to not overdo the dampness of the substrate as it can encourage mold growth and mushrooms, and this isn't necessarily a high humidity species. Keeping the water dish full and dampening the substrate from time to time should be plenty. For sub-adults and adults, I move them into a two and a half to five gallon style enclosure. I prefer to use the acrylic enclosures like these from Tarantula Cribs, but a glass aquarium of this size will work just as well. 
Just make sure it has a tight-fitting lid that can be securely locked down and avoid using the thin screen mesh lids and instead opt for the thick mesh lids as they are too large for the tarantula to get their feet stuck. I use cocoa fiber or any of the other substrates that I've mentioned so far and fill the enclosure halfway to two thirds with substrate and provide a hide and water dish as well as a few decorations. Even as adults, this species can dig a deep burrow and stay hidden for long periods of time, even sealing up their burrow. So if your pea sazame goes into hiding, it isn't anything to worry about. As far as feeding, I give my spiderlings a small cricket or roach, no larger than two thirds the size of the spiderling, twice a week. If there is no feeders available smaller than the sling, I will pre-kill the prey or cut it into small pieces as they will scavenge feed at this size. I remove any unwanted prey by the next day to avoid issues with mites and mold and wait two to three days after a molt before attempting to feed again. Juveniles, I will feed two to three medium crickets or one or two small roaches once a week. If the tarantula is in pre-molt, I will offer prey and remove the prey within 24 hours if it hasn't eaten it by then and try again in a week or two. Sometimes, even though the tea has sealed off its burrow and I haven't seen it in weeks, I will still leave a few crickets in there for 24 hours as they will sometimes venture out at night and reseal themselves in their burrow before morning. So they are actually out and about, I just don't realize it because I was sleeping. I usually wait about five to seven days after a molt before attempting to feed them again so they have time to harden up. I will feed more often when their abdomen is slim and less often when their abdomen is getting pretty plump. And as adults, I will feed them six to eight large crickets or a large dubia roach once every other week, depending on the size of the abdomen. Again, if they're looking thin, especially after a molt, I will feed them once a week or just offer more prey every other week. And as they get plump, I will cut back on the amount and frequency so they don't become overfed. I usually wait 10 to 14 days after a molt before offering food again. I try to avoid overfeeding my tarantulas, so a lot of the schedule as adults is based on their abdomen size. Overall, this is a great intermediate species and a must have for your collection once you're comfortable keeping a feisty tarantula. The only drawback is that for such a gorgeous spider, they tend to spend a lot of time in their burrows and don't stay out on display like a Gramistola or Brachypelma species. But when they're out, they are very exciting to watch and they have an intense feeding response, which is always fun. As long as you keep their water dish full, this is a very simple tarantula to take care of, and I highly suggest picking one up if you don't have one already. I raised my specimen up from a spiderling, and it still has some room to grow. It's not quite a full adult tarantula, but it's getting there quickly. It's frustrating that you don't get to see this tarantula as much as other species, but when you do get to see it, it is totally worth the wait. A huge thanks and shout out to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. I couldn't make these videos without you all, so thank you. If you want to support the channel on Patreon, there's a link down below in the description, or you can just hit that join button below the video and sign up as a member here on YouTube. If you want to catch up on all my past care and husbandry videos, just check out this playlist right here. And if you haven't listened to my new podcast yet, just check out this playlist right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>